it's done. The goal of the year, part of the past. The celebrations, forgotten. The history, history. We're back to a blank slate, clean ice. All that matters now is what happens next. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Eastern Conference Final begins Wednesday. Jewelry isn't a gift you give just once. It's a way to remind your loved one of a beautiful moment every time they see it. Blue Nile can help you find the gift that says how you feel and says it beautifully with expert guidance and a wide assortment of jewelry of the highest quality at the best price. Go to BlueNile.com and experience the convenience of shopping Blue Nile, the original online jeweler since 1999. That's BlueNile.com to find the perfect jewelry gift for any occasion. BlueNile.com. Welcome to 4.0 to Pro, the only pickleball podcast that focuses on a single shot tip or strategy to improve your pickleball game with every single bite-sized episode. Our goal is to make you better on the court every time you hear our voices. And now your hosts, 4-point-something Michael O'Neill and USA Pickleball National Silver Medalist, Senior Pro Scott Fliegelman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of 4.0 to Pro. This is the pickleball show that teaches you one tactic or tip per episode. I'm Michael O'Neill from Long Beach, California. I'm a 4-point-something I'm joined by Mr. Scott Fliegelman from Boulder, Colorado, a touring senior pro and one of the best pickleball instructors in the country. Hello, Scott. How are you? Hey, Mike. Doing great. We're talking return of serve on this episode. Why don't you kick us off and talk about maybe a bit of the, uh, what's the plan, dude? The return of serve plan, I think, starts in warmups. I mentioned this briefly in our last episode, but uh, we get five minutes. You know, if we're playing competitive tournament pickleball here and 4-0 to pro, we're probably wanting to do better at that. I've got one eye on my partner for our warmups. I've got one eye on our opponents to see if I can pick up some some weaknesses or strengths that we want to avoid. You know, right before we take the court for real, my partner and I have already discussed who are we returning to? I mean, this is one of the most important things you can do before a match starts. And there's a couple of different ways you can go with that. You can focus on who we think has the weaker third. So that would be fine if they dumped them all into the net. That would work out well for us. And if there's a glaring weakness, you know, one of the returners back ends is terrible and we can find it, they haven't hidden it from us, then that would be great. But as often as that, I'm also concerned with which one of them can do more damage or disrupt our flow as the one crashing the net. So in mixed, um, here's where things get interesting. More often than not, I'm returning to the guy because I want to keep him off the net. I'm more than willing to take a chance that he hits a decent third and his partner is less likely to cause a whole bunch of problems for us w- with the fifth. So at the very least, I say, we've got to think this through and not just hit that return anywhere. We'll come back to it. But if we have nothing else in mind, high, deep and down the middle is a great way to go. Right. I mean, ideally, that is our that is the default mechanism, right? High, high deep and down the middle. Uh, maybe higher than some people think because you want to have that opportunity to to get up to the kitchen. I think one of the things that happens and certainly happened early in my pickleball journey is, you know, I'd get the serve and then I just rip it back. And the problem with that is it does look cool for the chicks. I mean, it really, you get all the pickleball groupies. However, you've now just lessened the amount of time you have to get from the baseline to the kitchen. How many feet is that? You know all those things. From the baseline to the kitchen, 15 feet. 15 feet. So I got to go 15 feet now in two or three seconds versus having a little bit more time. If I put a little bit of air underneath the ball and maybe didn't strike it quite as hard, they have to let it bounce. That is the huge advantage of being the returner is they have to let the ball bounce. So if if you're not getting to the non-volley zone, you know, most of the time, they're either hitting you just killer deep serves, which is great. We covered that in the last episode. Good for you. Uh, good for them, rather. Um, or you're returning too hard and too fast and trying to rip it when you could uh, uh, loosen that thing up and and have a little bit more time to get to the to get to the line. Yeah, you you nailed it there. So yeah, higher than people might think, uh, or lower and just you know book it, you know run. Right. Uh, but there's a there's a stopwatch going there, and your opponents would love it if you were somewhere in the middle of the transition area when they got ready to hit their third. 
Right. One thing that you don't see pros do at all is they don't miss their returns very often. This is something that's a a pretty consistent shot for them. They do that because almost 95% of the time, I, I actually probably 100% of the time, they're six feet off the line. They're as far back as they can be when they are receiving the serve because they don't want to get stuck. They need they they don't want to get stuck with a ball that lands like on the baseline with some pace and then it's at their feet and they have nothing they can do with it. You're known for being as far back as you possibly can be, right? Yeah, there's not a whole lot of room behind the baseline in most pickleball courts and I use every bit of it. If I'm not starting my return of serve with my butt against the fence or the net, you know, whatever's behind me, then then I, I've already made a mistake. Like I want to keep everything in front of me. And then, you know, sometimes like you've mentioned, there's a tennis net or a post or something. I don't want to accidentally back up into that. So if I can start off tactically feeling that spot, I can move forward from there. So that, right. that's a default positioning to start my return of serve. We just want the momentum moving forward because that's our move. The second we strike the ball, we want to make a a, a beeline to that uh, non-volley zone. It's better technique and we want to move forward after we strike the ball. Speaking of technique, what would you consider the like the actual physical return technique, the actual stroke itself? Uh, can you give us a few tips on that? Well, we've already started. We've we've given some tips in that direction. The f- best thing you can do is is be moving forward, uh, start as far back as possible. And since we're talking forward a pro, you know this isn't a technique that uh, less experienced or lower rated players pick up rather easily. But we need to be split stepping when our opponents strike their serve. So I'll start leaning forward, moving forward, and I'm going to do a little split step. You know, our mm-hmm. opponents are good servers. I need to have my springs loaded, ready to move left, right, or forward, depending upon, you know, the location of that serve. And right. while we're at it and we're at this level, we need to be split stepping 100% of the time that the ball is on our opponent's paddle. So we may as well start off with the easiest one. <laughs> as they drop the ball to serve, split step. There was this great video of Annalie Waters and her mom in the, they're like in the middle of a firefight. They would hit the ball to their opponents and then in perfect synchronicity, bounce, bounce, split, hit, bounce, bounce, split, hit, bounce, bounce, split. Like it was amazing that it was, I mean, first of all, a birds of a feather, right? Um, but it was, the the training was so evident in how they set themselves up for every single shot. The, yeah. the, 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 go ahead, sorry. I, I, I've, I've said before, like, if you want to get really good at, at this, then, you know, grab your time machine, uh, head back to age eight and uh, spend six hours a day on a tennis court like Lee Waters did and Anna Lee Waters did. Uh, and you'll have that, you know, burned into you uh, right. or take your time machine two years forward and practice this split step, you know, for the next couple of years uh, to get good at it. Cause it's pretty critical and you don't see a successful pro not do this well. Right. It's, it's effectively hopscotch, you know, it's sure. one, two, one, two, two, one, two, whatever, but it's yeah. the two, it's the two of hopscotch. Sure. The, the the physical stroke, though, I hit my backhand returns, which is uh, has a slight slice on it, almost like I'd be hitting a, a a third shot drop or it's a similar stroke that I'm using a little more backswing and a little more leg. But the, the path of my paddle is still going to be this this even flat stroke that I'm keeping my eye on until the ball hits it and that's going to impart some backspin that's going to hopefully be high enough and, and deep enough and land sort of towards the middle of the court. Does that sound about right, Mr. Coach? Sure. Yeah. And as we get into the mechanics of it a little bit more, I'd much rather see the center of mass and the legs carry more of the weight of the return uh, as compared with the arm. Right. If we, if we take a lot of backswing and a long loopy swing there's a lot of pieces to that movement that can go wrong. So right. if, we're, if we're already going to start far back, split step on contact and be leaning forward, we've got a little bit of momentum going forward. We don't need much backswing at all. You know, it's really like what we're doing up at the kitchen. We don't want much backswing there. Uh, now we're just adding some of the forward momentum, which I think is highly repeatable and also under pressure. I'd much rather put the stress on the big muscles and less so on the the wrist and the hand and the fingers. That's when, you know, nerves really get to us, but I'm probably not going to succumb to the pressure with my center of mass going in the wrong direction at nine, nine and the third. 
Right. You know, I, I can execute that. And from the How? stroke production standpoint itself, most pros, I would say specifically the guys, are imparting some level of underspin. You know, we've talked about we want depth. Well, an underspin ball is going to probably keep flying until it runs out of RPMs. And we also want time. We want time to be able to follow that ball in. So an underspin or slice return uh, tends to give us, you know, two benefits uh, to that. In the last couple of years, we've seen more uh, women in the game coming from Division One tennis, and they've got these tremendous two-handed backhands, uh, which we don't see a whole lot of slice off of. They're going to yeah. drive that ball with the with the two-hander, and you know they're they're impactful with that. They can get pace and depth, and they're quick enough to follow it in. It's so rare. If you guys think about how often you've watched pickleball games and and you've played pickleball games, think about how many times. On the return of serve, someone hits to you or hits to someone on a court and their return is a winner. It's like infinitesimally small. It just doesn't happen a lot in pickleball. So if you are one of those people that's going for this huge ball on return, you're like you're ripping a, a hard drive, you know, full backswing and you're shooting for the corner. It's, it's so rare that that becomes a winner that it's not worth it. It's not worth the other 92 balls that didn't go in for the eight balls that did actually land for you. And, and for our few singles players out there, I, I'm cool with an allowance in serve and return of going for it a little bit more. Uh, that can be an 100%. entire episode in and of itself. Yeah. But in doubles play, it's such a huge advantage to have the two of you returners standing at the non-volley zone first. That why would we want to make the mistake of putting a return of serve into the net or or deep? You talked earlier about pros hardly ever miss a return of serve. You want to talk about take it one step further. The only acceptable miss is long. The only time they're ever going to miss right. is long. They're not going to. It's not going to go into the net. And it's not going to go wide. You know, those are the only two options. And right. you know, they're adding some underspin if a little bit of tailwind picks up. They might hit that ball six inches long, uh, but that's like we say, want to say in the budget, that's an acceptable error. Right, right, right. It, it is as rare as it gets, but if you're going to miss, you might as well miss long. miss long. Finally, the getting to the non-volley zone. So you're the, you're the one who's just returned. Your momentum is going forward. This is something I learned at actually one of our lessons that you uh, instructed me on. This was in singles, but I think the same applies. If for some reason someone hit a killer serve, and you are you are back and you haven't gotten as quickly to the line as you'd like. You have to split step when uh, your opponent uh, is, is about to hit the ball. You have to, because if you're if your momentum is going in a single direction and they hit it the opposite direction, your momentum is going the wrong way. You have no way to regulate how you're going to get back the other way. So even if you're in the wrong position, the best thing you can do is split step as they hit because then at least you can try to make up as much lost ground as you possibly can. Ideally, you've hit a nice return. You can get up there, no problem, uh, and you are set. But as we've kind of hammered this episode, split step is like 99% of the game uh, at, that, at that point, right? Yeah, and let's not make the mistake of calling it a split stop, uh, because it's not. Mm. It's, a, it's a one thousandth of a second, brief hesitation, loading of the springs on hot lava, or shards of glass, whatever works for you, from where you will then go to where your opponent is hitting the ball. Mm. And the best split steppers are actually waiting an extra tenth of a second after the ball has left the paddle of their opponent because they can move forward, make their split step, and adjust based on the flight of, of the ball from their opponent and be just that much closer to the net. They can wait just a little bit longer. And a great way to see the best in the world at this is you know watching the the top ATP and WTA tennis players uh, in the world. It's a, it's the perfect carryover from tennis to pickleball. They're all fantastic at it, uh, and, and we could learn from watching that. Sure, I mean as you do, folks. That is return of serve in pickleball. Anything you want to add to that, Scott? Anything we uh, didn't cover? One final thing on split step because it's one of my yeah. favorite topics. If you want to get better at it, watch pickleball on TV. Focus on one half of the court. Don't let your eyes follow the ball to the other side. Listen to when the ball is, is struck and watch the feet of the pros on one side of the court and just keep focused on that. You'll start to pick up, you know, how a split step works well. It's, inter it's interesting you say that. Like sometimes I'll do that. If I watch football, I'll watch a single player go through a play 
And you never notice some of the stuff they have to do, like especially linemen and how they have to do what they do. Um, absolutely. One of the coolest things uh, as someone who is is constantly trying to improve my game is I will focus on a single thing on a, I'll be watching a match and just be looking at footwork or like if I know somebody has a, a great stroke, I'll just be looking at how they go through that stroke. So we, we're so lucky right now. We live in this world of every single tournament that's major being televised on YouTube. So if you guys aren't watching all of those, it is absolutely critical that you jump in there and um, start watching and, and watch it with a critical eye and not just a, you know, a, an eye of a fan watching every individual point, but think about things you want to work on in your game and watch just for that specific thing and how the pros do it. So thank you, Scott. You are a rock star. There you go. Folks, at 4.02 Pro on Instagram, that's at the number 4.02 Pro on Instagram. Follow us there. We'll be having, uh, Scott will be making some really cool tips and tricks videos. And, you know, it's time to connect in the world. Thank you so much. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to 4.0 to Pro. For more tips, find us on Instagram at 4.0 to Pro. If you have a pickleball question, submit it at picklehelp.com. Now, get out there and dominate. But don't forget to have fun.